So for the past six months, I have completed an internship in retail corporations under the VIE R&D department software team. So as a trainee under the research and development department, most of my tasks will be design and develop the software application, testing and debugging for software application, generate the technical documentation for software applications, and as well as engage in the weekly follow-up meeting with my manager and colleague. As for the project that was assigned to me for my internship program, is the gateway application for energy management system, which basically is an IoT based project. So just a brief introduction on IoT Internet of Things, which is a system consists of interrelated devices, mechanical and digital machines, which is referred as object of thing. These object or things can be device, any devices with sensor, a person with heart monitor implants, or even a farm that are provided with the unique identifiers and the ability to transfer the data over the network while requiring human-to-human -human or human-to-computer interaction. So in general, there are four main components in the IoT system. The first one is the device or object that I mentioned earlier. This sensor device helps in collecting the data from the surrounding environment such as temperature or power meter on every second interval. Next, we have the gateway which is the medium or bridge for transporting the collected data into cloud or server via some network connectivity. Then we have the cloud or server, which is a huge interconnected network of powerful server that performs services mainly on data storage and data processing. So last but not least, we have the data analytic, which is the process of converting the large number of data into a useful insight, which can then be used to make useful decisions by the end user. So of course, there's a lot more components involved, especially on a complex IoT system. But in general, these four major components is what make up as the IoT system. So before I begin the project demonstration, just a quick overview on how the devices are set up in the server. So here we can see there are a total of five digital power meter devices connected via DC chain by using the cable RS485, which is then connected to the wireless serial converter. So each of these devices has its own device ID, such as one, two, three, and so on. And this device is specifically used for measuring the power usage, such as current and voltage. And how will the gateway facil facilitate the communication with the device is by using the mod bus protocol, which I will explain later. So I developed the gateway application by using NodeRate, which is a programming tool for wiring hard to get hardware at devices, API and online services in a new and interesting way. It also provides browser-based editor which makes it easy to wire to get the flows using a wide range of nodes and functions in the palettes that can be deployed to its runtime in a single click. Besides that, Nora is also famous and used widely by many people in developing IoT applications. So to start the Nora, just open up the command prompt and type in Nora. Wait for a while, you will say the flow has been started, which means now uh, the Nora has been started and we can access the Nora in the browser. So from the start, this is how the workflow of the Nora looks like. And few of the important nodes here is the inject node, which is used to start the applications, the postgres nodes, which is used to perform the query to store the data into the database, and of course the modmask node, which is used to facilitate co communications with the device. Modmask is a serial communication protocol developed by Multicode and published in 1979 for use with its programmer logic controllers. In other words, it is a method used for transmitting information over serial lines between electronic devices. The device requesting the information is called the Modmask Master and the device supplying the information are the Modmask Slave. So basically the Modmask can read and write the information to the slaves. Up until now there are two versions of Modmask Protocol Assist which are the Serial Lines Modmask RTU and the Internet Modmask TCP. In my case the Modmask used is the Modmask RTU which are then connected to convert to the Modmask TCP by using the wireless Modmask Converter. So a little in depth on how the master and slave work on the Modbus communications. First of all, the master will initiate a request by sending the function code and the data request such as the starting address and the number of lines you are needed, along with its slave IDs, in which the corresponding slave will respond by performing the actions and sending the response to the master. Then the master will receive the response along the data needed. If you open up the Modbus node, there's a few uh, setting that we need to configure in order to use them, such as the type of uh, co connections, TCP, serial or serial expert, the host of the server, the default port, the unit ID, timeouts, reconnect on timeouts, and of, of course the unit ID in parallel. For this demonstration, I will just wire the node to the one of the server which is on the top right here. 
And to begin retrieve the data from the device, all I have, I have to do is just to click on the inject node since all of them has uh, been connected together. And wait for a while and all the device data should come in. So each of the object data on the debug that here represent to one device. And if we look into the this object data, there's like data like current or voltage. And these are the data that we re actually retrieve from the device itself. Demonstrate on the data story, I will open up my Postgres localhost, which is the database that I use in these gateway applications. And in the node reads, I will open up the Postgres nodes and set up some credentials. So inside the Postgres node, we can see there are some configuration like the host, mod, the database names, and also the user and password for the credential as well. And I will create a new database uh, for this demonstration. On my Postgres site, I will create a new database. And the name of the database should be the uh, same as the one that I set up on the node earlier. So wait for a file and an empty database has been created without any data on it, which I can use to uh, demonstrate on this gateway application. On my node site, since I have set up the credential for the data, all I have to do is just click the inject node again and wait for all the data to come in. So going back to my Postgres site, we can see a few, uh, few table has been created and each of these uh, table represents the data from each device and all those table names actually you need because it's a combination of TCP server address and the device unit ID. So if we go into one of the table and look inside, we can see that all the data has been stored inside the table in a row column relational format. So usually the gateway will retrieve the data from the device by using the modbus protocol, process and convert the data according to its data types and store the data into the database according to its uh, device ID. But what if the, the gateway could not form the connection with the database and so the data will not uh, be able to store inside the database. As the case, the node rate will detect the error and store the data temporarily in the local directory in a JSON format file. And in order to demonstrate that functions, I will just mess around with the database credentials by changing the database name. With the wrong database credential, I will just click on the inject node as usual. And we can see the error messages are appearing on the debug deck because the database basically does not exist, so the data could not go into the database. And if we look into our local drive and the temp directory, Inside the directory, we have few folder, which the folder name is named after the uh, TCP server address. And if you look into the first directory, there is six JSON files because there are six devices on that particular server. And each of these uh, JSON folder JSON file contains the data for that particular device. Once the database connection has recovered, on the next floor, the gateway will check the local directory to see if there is any file. And if it does, it will process the file one by one on a priority basis. So I will just change back the database uh, credential into the correct ones and run the application again by clicking on the inject nodes. So if we go back to the Postgres and refresh the table, we can see there's a two new row of data where initially it has only has one. So the second row is actually the all data before and the third row is the latest data that we collect just now. So besides that, I also prepared a simple dashboard just for monitoring the status of the device from each server. And to show it, I, I just restart the gateway and click on the inject node again. And if we go into the dashboard, we can see the active status is appearing on each of the device ID. So that's a wrap and end of the, this project uh, gateway application demonstration.